Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. In this video we're going to be looking at Unbound. I'm going to be telling you what Unbound is, why you might want to use it, I'll talk you through all of the configuration steps and then we'll get this set up. I'll also be showing you how to do this in Docker, tying it in with Pi-hole and hmm, possibly even using a VPN. So let's dive straight into it. What is Unbound? Well Unbound is a recursive DNS resolver. What does that mean? Well, whenever you do a search on the internet, if you're not already using a recursive DNS server, you're forwarding that DNS request on. So let's take, for example, google.com. If you want to go to google.com and it's not cached, your machine is going to have to reach out to a recursive DNS resolver on the internet, i.e. this is not owned by you. Now, what that will do is try to tie an IP address to that URL. So it will typically go out to the top level domain, that TLD, which will be .com, and then it will ask for an authoritative name server to say, hey, what's the IP address of google.com? That will then be returned to your machine, and then you'll be on your way. The issues around that are predominantly privacy. So this other, i.e. again, not one that you own, this recursive DNS resolver will have knowledge of all the DNS requests that you've made. So over time, it can probably get a good picture of who you are and what you're doing, which depending on what you're looking at and what you're searching might not be ideal. So how does Unbound fix it? Well, essentially it takes that third party recursive DNS resolver and it becomes self-hosted. So instead of you calling out to a recursive DNS resolver, you use the one within your home lab. That means you keep all of that data within your environment and it doesn't leave. Now, it's really important to stress that doing something like Unbound and even using what I'm going to show you today with Pi-hole and a VPN, unless you're routing all your traffic through that, as soon as you want to actually visit that website, the SNI data and the IP will be passed on to your ISP and they will obviously see what you're doing because they basically have to route your traffic. So do understand that there are limitations to this. It's not the same as using something like a VPN. And in this video, I will show you how you could route all of your DNS queries through a VPN. But unless you're actually then accessing it through a VPN, you're going to give the game away. There are also some other benefits to having your own recursive DNS resolver. If you're running it on your own infrastructure, it's very likely going to be more performant because there's going to be fewer hops in getting to the recursive DNS resolver. And you're likely going to be served quicker because there's less competition. It'd be interesting to see some tests on that, but I've seen a few milliseconds in the ones that I've done, and general consensus for online is this is more performant. So let's now jump into the configuration. I'll walk you through Docker Compose first, and also the configuration files that we'll need to have on top of this. Plus, I'll talk you through some of the options that are available to configure this as you might like. So jumping into the configuration, we've got five main files. We've got the Docker Compose file, which you can see on screen. And then there are four configuration files, which we will mount through a bind mount into our container. Again, as before in previous videos, and also in my last pie hole where we used a Cloudflare tunnel, this Docker Compose file is comprised of two, possibly three if you wanted, services. That is Unbound, Pi-hole, and optionally a VPN through Gluton. I'll have both of those configurations on my GitHub, but I'm only going to talk about the Unbound and Pi-hole in this video. And you can see through my Torrents over VPN video if you want to see how you can route all of your containers through a VPN. Now, whilst I'm going to talk you through all of the configuration steps to get this running and mirror my setup, it's really important that you do go and have a look at all the options and configure it for yourself. What I'm going to show you is going to take the sting out of some of the deployment because there are lots of options to this. But this might not always be suitable for you, so please do go and check that documentation. Anyway, without further ado, let's jump into the Docker Compose. So the first thing in the Docker Compose is the network section. And much like my previous video on Pi-hole, we're going to set up a small subnet network. Now this is because we need to specify static IPs for these two services because Pi-hole for its DNS1 entry is going to specify the unbound container. So all I've done here 
is I've set this as a bridge and I've set the subnet of 172.23 slash 16. Now that's available on my Docker network, but if that's not available, choose a range that is. What I find really handy is jumping into Portainer, looking on the network tab, and then just seeing what's available. Also, you might want to have a check there periodically because if you're spinning up new containers and deleting them, it doesn't always delete the network left behind. So you can rapidly run out of available address spaces. You could also obviously make this a lot smaller to something like a slash 24, 28, etc., because we only really need two IP addresses. So let's jump into the first container, which is PyHole. So here you can see I've set the container name to PyHole. The host name is PyHole, and we're using the latest PyHole image. You might want to pin this to something else if you're not. And do remember that this is going to pull down the one for AMD64. If you're using a Raspberry Pi, there will be a separate image that you need to pull down. After that, we're going to use this network we created up here and we're going to set it as an IP of 07. Next, we're going to set the ports. As you can see, we've got port 53, which is used for DNS queries, and we've also got port 80. Now, port 80 will be the web admin page. I've actually changed that to 85 on mine because port 80 is already being used by the proxy. You could also route this through the labels like I've got down here, and you wouldn't actually need port 80 because it's going to be load balanced on port 80 down here. If you don't know what I'm talking about with the traffic labels, go and check that out in a previous video. And if you don't want to use traffic or you're using something like Nginx, you can delete this section and just continue without it. As a result of using traffic where I offload all of my SSL termination, I don't need to have port 443 open because that's already taken care of. Now a quick edit, because I appreciate I was using a deprecated variable, we've got the environment variables. So set the time zone to wherever you're based, set the web password to anything but password, and then crucially, we're gonna set the PyHole DNS. And if you look at it carefully, it's the next sequential IP. So 07 was what we set for PyHole, and 08 is what we set for PyHole's DNS resolver. And if you look down at the bottom, you guessed it, the next container unbound is going to be set to use that IP address. So what does that mean? Well, what we're saying is PyHole, don't you go and forward because that's the default behavior of PyHole. It won't be a recursive resolver. It will say, hey, I want to get to this URL and I don't have it cached. Send it out to somewhere like Cloudflare, which will have its recursive DNS resolver it can do all of its work where the privacy issue with caching comes in. It will then send it back to PyHole. And as long as PyHole doesn't have it within its blacklist, it will then take you to the website. In this instance, we're saying, hey, don't forward it to Cloudflare, forward it to Unbound. And we'll come into that in a moment. Now for the volumes, they're pretty straightforward. We're just gonna be mounting the ETC PyHole and the DNS mask. And those are just gonna be mounted to the equivalent folders within the container itself. We've set this to be a restart unless stopped because it's pretty important to have our DNS resolver up. And then I've added the optional traffic labels, which if you don't want to use, simply delete. But if you do, just tweak them to your settings. And you'll have seen me do this a number of times throughout my videos already. Once we've done that, we're ready to move on to the following container. And that is Unbound. Now, thankfully, MVANTS has created a container for this. Traditionally, you would deploy this as an installation binary on Linux, but thanks to Docker, we can now make this simple, straightforward process that's easily repeatable. So all we're gonna do is pull the latest image, and then crucially, we're gonna set the IP address to 08, which we've referenced earlier. We're gonna create this volume mount here, which, if you look on the left, is where all these .conf files are gonna be stored, and we'll have a look at those in a moment. Now, traditionally, as this likes to use port 53, we can't use that because we would have a conflict with PyHole up here, because 53 is already used. So in this instance, I'm changing the external, so this is the host port, remember, on the left is the host, on the right is the container, to 5053. And that's why, if you look at this PyHole DNS here, you'll see that we actually say this IP down here, and then it's the port of 5053. So any traffic that gets sent to my Docker VM on port 5053 will be routed to port 53 to unbound, which is what it expects. So now that we've gone through that, we've got all the container stack ready. 
we're ready to go through the configuration files. So I'll start first by going through the unbound conf. Now that's because this is the master file for the configuration file and this file references all of the others. So think of it as the major tweaks and changes are in here and then you have supplementary or specific changes that are taken care of in these respective files here. Now these configuration files are pretty weighty. So I'm only going to focus on the things that I've changed from the default. But I do recommend that you take some time, understand what's going on here. Not necessarily because there's something you can do wrong here, but more so you understand how DNS works and some of the options that are available to you. So just scrolling down in here, one of the things you might want to be aware of is the interface. So you can actually change the port here that you're using. Say for example, if port 5053 was already taken by something else, you could change that port in here and you'll be okay. One thing you might want to do, but I haven't enabled is logging and you'll be able to see those in Portainer or through the command line interface, which might be useful if you're running into problems. If you're using this container stack and this configuration, you should be good to go. But in case it doesn't work, you might want to enable this and redeploy the container. One thing that's nice with an unbound are the security settings. So effectively here, we've created an access control list, whereby we've specified that only internal networks can have access to our recursive DNS server. And that's really useful. One of the other benefits of doing this is not just the privacy, but it's also security. If, for example, the recursive DNS resolver you're now using was poisoned, that's an attack whereby an attacker would change the IP address associated to a DNS record, you could be in big trouble. For example, instead of the IP address of your bank pointing to the actual bank, it could instead point to a self-hosted copy of your bank's webpage that's maintained and managed and monitored by the hacker. So obviously from phishing credentials, etc., that's not a good spot to be in. And now focusing at the bottom of the unbound config file, you'll see references to the other three that I've got over here. Now I'm going to include those just so that you have the option of tweaking them and they're taken verbatim from the official documentation. However, I'm not actually using them. Now that's because I don't have any custom A or SRV records. They're handled in PyHole. And also, I don't want to do any forwarding in the forward zone because that's why we've set up Unbound. We don't want to set up Unbound to just forward it off to Cloudflare or whatever. And if we click on the forward configuration, you'll see all of these options in here. So you could just use this like you're possibly using PyHole now to just forward everything off and let the Cloudflare recursive DNS do the work for you or Quad9 or whichever ones are in here and you can configure it. But I don't want it to do that. I want Unbound itself to do it. And that's why in this configuration file, I've got it hashed out. So that means that Unbound is going to do the recursive DNS for us, which is exactly what we want. So now let's hop into our terminal and let's spin this up and let's see what happens. So over on my Docker host, I've copied over the compose.yaml file, which is this one here. And then I've also copied over into the other folder. So you can choose whichever volume bind mount you want. You can see in the unbound, I've got those configuration files and chiefly we want the unbound.conf, but you also got the option of specifying other variables within the other three if you need to. So all we need to do now is hop over into the terminal and we need to run our good old trusty sudo docker compose up dash d. So when you run this command, it's going to go away and it's going to pull the container for the first time. I've already run that, but you can see here that it started both those containers and it will also for the first time create that network that we've specified in the docker compose file. So I'm going to hop into Portainer now just to check out the logs and make sure that there's nothing nasty going on. So over in Portainer, you can see that Unbound and PyHole are starting. So if we have a look at the logs here, all of this looks fine. Everything's waiting. The container tags up and running. There's no error messages. Great. Going back, we can have a look at Unbound. And yeah, everything's fine and there's no errors here. So now with any look, you can access the PyHole we've just deployed. Now, obviously, if you're not running this behind a reverse proxy, go to the IP address and in this instance, that port 85, 
or if you're using something like traffic and you've got your DNS record set up, go to that DNS record. If this is the first time you're setting up Pi-hole, you'll need to go to your VM IP and then colon 85 slash admin and you'll need to add your DNS record first. Then once it's added, you should be able to get rid of the port and then fall back to the reverse proxy, which will route you to the container on the standard port 443. So let's check that this is now working. So I'm going to head to 192.168.200.50 colon 85 slash admin, which is that one I first mentioned using the port. And here you go, we can log in. So logging in with password, we're now greeted with the dashboard for Pi-hole. Now, nothing's going to be using that because I haven't set my machine to use this. But let's have a quick look in the settings and then head over to the DNS tab. And you'll see that our other container on that 8 IP address on port 5053 is used as the upstream DNS server. So instead of on the left where you may have this already ticked, none of these are ticked. Every request we have is being forwarded to unbound and unbound is acting as a recursive DNS resolver because we haven't set any forwarders. So great, let's test this out. I'm gonna set this PyHole instance as my DNS resolver in Windows, and then hopefully we should start to see some DNS queries being populated. So over on Windows on my DNS settings, I'm gonna to go to manual, I'm gonna hit IPv4, and then I'm gonna put in the IP address that you can see in the address bar. And with any luck, once I hit save, we should start to see some populated queries in the background. So now hitting save, yeah, we can start to see I've got four queries. And if we look at the query log, you'll start to see that, yeah, Microsoft, Join Honey, all of that stuff. So we know that it's working, which is great. Now, if this is the first time you're using Pi-hole, I'll just give you a brief note, but do go check out my original video where I go into this in a little bit more detail. If you want to add your own local records, you wanna click on the left, local DNS, and then DNS records. And in here, you can add local DNS records. So for something like proxmox.yourdomain.com, you could add that here and then specify your IP address and be routed through that way. So thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully now you've got everything you need to set up Unbound in Docker in your home lab and start to regain some of your privacy. Now, as I said, do take that with a pinch of salt. When you actually do connect to these, if you're not using a VPN, your ISP, etc., will see what you're going to. But hopefully this is really useful for you and hopefully you'll see some speed improvements and also you'll be safe in the knowledge that you're using your own infrastructure. Please drop a comment below if this is something that you're wanting to use and how you're going to use it. If you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.